There's some interesting aspects to this question that I want to make sure that you understand because not only does it apply to this question, but it applies to some other questions you may get as well. Uh, first of all, the 50% brake horsepower. Like I said before, we are not going to adjust our number that we get if, they, if, if we are told 50% brake horsepower because our four gallons per hour is already adjusted for 50%. Another thing, it says three, fuel is, is uh, $3.50 a gallon. What do you think about that? Ratchet. Yeah, it's okay. extraneous information. And that is very typical. You will get questions that have extraneous information. Don't assume that everything they give you is important because it's not. <clears throat> it won't be. Three fifty a gallon, we're not going to worry about. How about above average operator? Doesn't say difference. anything about it. Doesn't make any difference. Okay, so we can scratch those two things. All we have to do is realize we don't adjust our number here, and we've got a 250 horsepower backup that's, that's going eight hours. All right, so what we should have done here is we should say four times two and a half, four gallons, two and a half, 250 horsepower times eight hours, 80 gallons. And you're telling me 80 was not a choice. I know 80 was not a choice. Okay, uh, you're going to adjust up, you're going to choose one higher because why? Remember we read backhoes will normally consume more than other machines according to Walker. So if 80 was not a choice, we would choose 85, right? Plus, do you want to be running that diesel equipment out of gas, out of fuel? Oh, really? No. All right, so we're going to go with 85. Once again, do not adjust for the 50% because it's already adjusted there. Real good. That's fuel consumption. If you can do that, you're going to be all right. Let's jump on over to page 216. 216. I want you to highlight something there in the middle of that page on page 216. It's the second paragraph, and we're told that truck capacity for proper sizing should be at least four times the dipper or bucket capacity of the excavator. You see that? Make sure you can find it. As we go to page 218, we're going to go about halfway down the page, and in bold print it says scraper application on page 218. Scraper application. I want you to highlight the last sentence or the last sentence fragment in that paragraph. A skilled operator can cut a grade to within a tenth of a foot and spread that fill to the same degree of accuracy. 218. 218. Do you see where it says scraper application in bold print? Mm -hmm. It's that paragraph, last sentence, that skilled operator. Let's go to the bottom of page 219. Hourly cost of operation. You may get a math question which asks you what is the hourly cost of operation. What do we include in that? Well, we're going to include tire replacement, tire repairs, fuel, lubrication, mechanical repairs, maintenance of blades and cables, etc. Is there anything in that list that is glaringly missing? Labor. Labor, yeah. Well, guess what? you don't include labor in your hourly cost of operation. So make sure that you're aware of that. If you get a math question and they want you to figure out the hourly cost and they throw labor in there, uh-uh, don't add labor in. The next thing we're going to look at is on page 224. On page 224 there is a table about halfway down the page, and the table is uh, titled Approximate Hourly Production of Bulldozers. And this is based on an 83% job efficiency. Now, this table already converts the, uh, already assumes an 83% job efficiency. If the table does not already calculate that for you, then you may have to do it yourself. This particular one does 
uh, have 83% job efficiency. Where do they get 83% from? How do you get 83% job efficiency? Any idea? That's from the 50 minute. Ah, you're not gonna get 60 minutes out of somebody, right? Are they gonna work a full 60 minutes? Probably not. What is assumed is that you will get about 50 minutes out of every 60 minutes. So in your calculator, type in 50 and divide by 60. What do you get? Ah, you get 0.83, right? So it's assumed that you're going to get 50 minutes out of every hour. So keep that in mind as we go through. 0.83 is your average efficiency. And this chart is already takes, this table already takes that into account. So we're using a, a, a bulldozer. This table discusses a 70, 80, 90, or 200 horsepower bulldozer. Let's assume we're doing some simple clearing, some vegetation, some light brush, tree samplings, okay, in square feet per hour. If we're using a 200 horsepower machine, on average, how many square feet are we going to be able to clear in an hour? About 1,500. It's 1,450 to 1,550, right? So let's use 1,500 for our calculation. So I want you to look at this question here. Using that table, let's answer this question. Bulldozer production. Using a 200 horsepower bulldozer, assuming normal efficiency, on average, how many days would it take to clear an acre of light vegetation? Take a minute, you might want to hit the pause button, but take a minute and see how many days it's going to take, according to this table in walkers, to clear an acre. And you're asking how many square feet are in an acre? And what I want you to do is I want you to refer to chapter 24, page 2 of the Walker's book. There is a section, what they call mensuration. It's uh, about measurements. And there's going to be a conversion there that's going to tell you how many square feet are in an acre. And that's going to help us out a lot. Page again, 20, uh, chapter 24, page 2. There's actually not a page number at the bottom. You have to look at the top. Page, chapter 24 page two.